There's a test called hair tissue mineral analysis, HTMA, and you're literally sending some of your hair away. And it tests for a lot of mineral content, heavy metals that might be in your system. And what was so interesting about the test that I did, I had high uranium. And the practitioner that reviewed my consult was like, maybe you should check your home for radon. Matter of fact, we have high radon. And thank goodness I had this hair test to then test the home for high radon because obviously it's tasteless, it's smellless. I would have never known. There is a pipe in the basement that has that is a radon pipe. However, there is not a fan on it to help it disperse into the air uh, out of the roof. So how interesting is it that that test may have saved some of my family's lives? Welcome to Linda's Corner, where we bring more hope, healing, and happiness to the world. Today, we're going to be talking about women's health. I'm delighted to welcome Fallon Morningstar. Fallon is an environmental engineer and a functional diagnostic nutrition practitioner. You can reach Fallon at her website, and I'll include a link in the show notes. Welcome, Fallon. I'm so glad that you could join me today. Same here, Linda. Thank you for having me. Helen, I am so delighted to be talking about women's health and that matters. And it matters to me because I am a woman and I want to be healthy. And so this is exciting to me. And I would love if it's okay to start with your journey. What is your health journey? What have you experienced? Yeah, thank you for that question. I feel like we could probably take a whole show to go over <laughs> go over the journey. But the Cliff Notes version is. At 26, I was starting to have a lot of these physical health symptoms come up. Things like emotional eating, I would feel wired and tired. It was like I could not get enough sleep to make me feel energized again. It was like a chronic fatigue state. My muscles would be sore even four days after training, so I knew I wasn't recovering. My hormones were irregular, of course, as we can tell, because I was on the hormonal birth control pill for about 10 years. And I had just decided to get off of that. So my hormones were all like, what are we doing here? So my cycle was irregular. And you're 26 and you're thinking, I am supposed to be at the peak of perfection. And not only just because of the age, but because you are working out, you're exercising, you're doing the things that we expect to do to be able to take care of our bodies. So I can just imagine the, the, the turmoil inside of what is happening to me? Am I broken? What, what's going on? So then did you go through a, a, trying to figure out what the problem was and were they able, or who did you go to and what kind of solutions did they come up with? Yeah. So I went to my family physician and I I really looked completely fine from the outside. And that is what he had said to me. And at that time, I didn't know the terminology or really the right questions to ask. So I said, I think it's my hormones. All of these symptoms are what I'm experiencing. And unfortunately, it felt like I was kind of left in the dark. I didn't really have answers to proceed with anything. We did a basic blood panel, which looking at my cholesterol levels, looking at TSH, and they were all normal, no like high numbers. And so it it left me with no direction. And then I went to my gynecologist, informed her that I stopped taking the contraceptive and she didn't really guide me either. It was kind of like, well, what other contraceptive would you like to be on? And I was very clear with saying nothing. I said, I've been on this for 10 years. And I noticed every single time my withdrawal bleed would come, it would be more, a little bit more clotty. I noticed this progression over the last couple of years. And so again, more questions. Thankfully, I found functional health. Didn't even know what the term functional meant or integrative. And then my friend who was dealing with or working with a practitioner at the time was going through some testing. So food sensitivity test, hormone test, stool test. And I was fascinated by this because I said, well, I didn't really hear of these tests before. I would love to know like what you're doing. And so I ended up doing the same thing. Fell in love with the tests because the results gave me validation 
for what I am experiencing. And fast forward six months after changing a lot of lifestyle factors of what I originally thought was healthy and changing or going through a healing protocol, natural supplements to help bring me back into balance. I actually went through the same certification as what that practitioner had. And voila, here we are, Fallon, the practitioner. <laughs> wow. Okay. So we're, we're rewinding a little bit. Every person that I have talked to who has been in a state of there is something wrong with me and I can't figure out what it is. And you're going to people to get those answers because we have to know what the problem is in order to begin creating a solution. And so you're going through this process and coming up with a dead end and a dead end. And I really appreciate that you said that your family practitioner w- went, did some of the tests, did some blood work, did some things, because that's what we're hoping for is give me something. But unfortunately, in your case, it did not, it didn't give you any answers. It was just, well, we don't know either. So, you know, have fun with that. And then being able to be guided into something new, which boy, you're going to have to explain to me because this is the very first time that I have heard of these terms. And so to be able to say, okay, here's a different set of tests. I thought it was hilarious when you said, and I fell in love with these tests because usually we do not love tests, but we do love getting answers. And so if the tests give us the answers, I think I'd be in love with the test too. Yeah. So can you tell us what is this? Yeah. I, I love the the enthusiasm and, and the questions. And I think I don't necessarily love tests either, but I love them because of the answers that they help provide us. It's like that guidance back to self almost because society, we, we're just so disconnected from ourselves and we can't really correlate anything. We want to follow a sheet of paper saying here, eat this, this, or follow this ketogenic diet, for example. And it's not necessarily what works for us. But these specimens, whether it be saliva, um, plasma, urine, whatever, this is us. You know, it's not a standard form or standard test. It's part of us going into this test to show us these results, to bring us back to self. So to go into a little bit more detail about these tests, and there are five foundational tests that I run on every client, but I have access to hundreds of them. So if we ever need to branch out, we can always do that. Five foundational tests allow me to see a good picture of what's going on inside. And I create the protocol based on creating this clinical correlation. It's not just me looking at the test. It's me looking at the individual and the test to create this protocol. And say if there are, you know, for example, say if there's indications of something coming up on the test that we run, that it would be beneficial to add a full thyroid panel, for example, if it would be beneficial to add more tests to give us a bigger picture, a bigger window of what's going on, then yes, we do have access to that. And I say we as practitioners that have gone through the certification, we have the ability to order these tests because there are doctors that are affiliated with the company that because we've gone through an extensive certification program and clinical advisor consult and lab interpretations, we have the privilege, really the honor to order these tests and have it. The kits are directly shipped to the client's home. It is e- extremely easy to successfully complete the test. Most of the time you can do it directly in your home. There might be one test I can think of, which is the food sensitivity that you have to go to phlebotomist to get your blood drawn. Other than that, it's either a urine, stool, maybe a dried um, blood spot that you can do on your own. So it's very easy to complete. So let's, could I do something and send, like you send me the tests and then I send it back and then you send me the results so you can do things from distance? Or is it only just, yeah, I have to go into a practitioner like you go into your doctor? So I, as a practitioner, would order them and they would be shipped to you. And we would go over how to complete them successfully, you know, how to, because obviously the specimen matters, you know, you are investing in this test. I want to make sure that you do it correctly. And then it gets shipped, whether it be USPS, UPS, FedEx, it depends what lab it is of what their shipping method is. So it would be dropped, shipped that direction, going to their lab, they interpret the results and I, I get the report 
in my email inbox. And then really yeah. because that means that you're able to help people beyond your geographic area. Global. Hmm. Yeah. That is magical. And when you started saying, and we start with these five tests. And then that is it kind of gives you the, okay, now we know the baseline of where the problem is so we can shoot off in this direction. So that's, it's not just, we're going to start here and that didn't work. Okay. Now we'll start over here and that didn't work, but it, it gives the basis for the direction. I, I'm imagining kind of a fractal system, like the, the branches of a tree, like, okay, we've had this branch and it's, it's not on that branch. So over here, now we're going to follow that a little further and get some more information. Yeah, that's brilliant. That. And I would love, so you're, you're kind of walking us through a little bit, but is it okay if we use you as an example? What, what did they find for you? Because in your story, you mentioned, I was doing things specifically to be healthy that were not serving you. So somehow you needed to make some changes. And that's so crazy. When we talk about health, there's so many different opinions and different uh, ideas out there. You know, I'm supposed to eat uh, periodic fasting. I'm supposed to not eat and then I'm supposed to eat a lot. No, you're supposed to do this uh, metabolic where you, you, you build up your metabolism by eating constantly five and six times a day. Or I'm supposed, and, and then they're totally opposite. And so there's so much information that when we're really honestly, sincerely trying to do it right, we can be doing totally and completely different things. Yeah. Yeah. Totally get that. And I get the frustration and I think it is all an experiment on what works for us. I know I've definitely tried a lot of things and I continue to keep trying things to see what does work because it is like that beautiful onion being peeled back as we heal the initial symptoms, which symptoms are like the last thing to come up. It's not the root cause. It's like, oh, now this other thing shows up. Okay. How can we learn a little bit more? How can we heal a little bit more? So to go over how, so the symptoms I explained a little bit in the beginning, to look at my food sensitivity test, one, the foods that came up that I can remember, this, this was a couple of years ago, um, broccoli, green pepper, lamb, hmm, what else? I know grains, some of the grain category was a little bit higher as well as sensitivity. And to, to say that, you might be thinking green pepper and broccoli, well, what? <laughs> And these are healthy foods, no doubt about it. However, my immune cells could not handle this, this food because when we're looking at the food sensitivity test, we're looking at our blood and there's immune cells in that blood. And so when we're, when the lab is interacting these foods and there's 176 different foods that they look at, doesn't matter if I'm eating it or not. And they look at how the cell is changing. Is it inflamed when it's interacted with this food? And so they put it on this category of the greens, the yellows, and the reds, letting me know that the yellows and the reds, my system is currently reactive to it. So the protocol just for that specific test is we're removing the yellows and the reds for at least 90 days, because when we're removing this sensitivity, it's like our body can better heal itself because it's not needing to break down this, this inflammation of this broccoli and green pepper. So that's just an example of the food sensitivity test and how by removing those foods, you can see a reduction in inflammation. You can feel better. And of course your digestive system can work better because it's, it's worried about digesting. Now it's not worried about getting rid of this inflammation, if that makes sense. That is so amazing and so crazy. And you talked before about having it be individual and to say that your situation of green pepper, broccoli is individual is so spot on because you could not say, okay, now I know what works for me. Okay. Everyone in order to be healthy, you've got to eliminate all broccoli. We got to get rid of all green peppers because those are so bad for you. Because for most people, it's just the opposite. It's we need more greens in our diet. We need more of this. So. Wow. Yeah. Just looking at a generalized thing would never come up with that particular suggestion. It's like, hmm, you know, you're not feeling very well and you're have irregular periods. So probably get off that broccoli. That's a that that causes that sort of thing. So wow. Wow. Okay. Very individual, very tailored. Crazy. What else did they find? 
What's interesting is that I did when I was eating these foods, broccoli and green pepper, I didn't get this super big reaction that I could have correlated that. There are some things where, you know, if somebody removes gluten or if they remove dairy, they can probably mm -hmm. feel a lot different. While the broccoli and green pepper, it's not like I had an allergic reaction, but there's underlying food sensitivities that you might not be able to specifically feel. Maybe you feel worse 48 hours after. And that's why it makes it sometimes very hard to actually correlate broccoli sensitivity, you know? Oh, wow. Definitely. Because those symptoms that we're hunting for it, it are not manifest in any of the ways that we would expect. Right. Right. So to go over a little of the hormone test, and when I, when I started out, I did three tests. Um, they actually added two other panels that are super helpful, which we can certainly tap into if, if we have some time. But the hormone test was really showing me that I had very low melatonin. And as we know, melatonin is our sleep hormone that obviously helps us sleep, have a good night quality sleep. And mine was very low. And this could be for a couple of reasons. One of them is actually, a, I think it might be 25% of melatonin is in the gut. So if we don't have good gut health, of course, we're not going to have the proper amount of melatonin production. And my gut health, which we can go over in the stool result um, was definitely impacted. So another factor that I believe made this low was that I was inside a lot. I used to work in local government and I was in this cubicle most of the time. And then I would actually travel and drive to grad school. And so I was inside a lot. And so we are impacted by these artificial lights all the time, this blue light stimulating in our faces most of the time, whether it's television, the ceiling lights or, or phone screen, whatever. And if we're not actually getting the natural sunlight, because when, when the sun or even just the natural light is hitting our retina, there's a production happening of melatonin. And so it actually isn't yet released until the nighttime. So at nighttime, Again, if we're looking at the screens, our melatonin cannot be released because it's being stimulated by that blue light. So we really want to calm our system down and allow the melatonin to be released. And the blue light versus the red light, you know, just like uh, the rainbow spectrum, Roy G. Biv, if we, if we know that, um, we're watching the sun rise and we're watching the sunset and we can see the different colors of the light spectrum and the frequencies coming through. So it is very important that for our circadian rhythm, for our sleep and wake cycles, that we follow it as best as we can. And that will help our melatonin production. So hopefully that all sounded kind of yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I am with you. And I think that it's fascinating. So as we're talking about melatonin, because sleep is a huge issue, we have to be able to have sleep so that we can function during the day. And to know, repeating once again, that 25% of that is produced in our gut. And so our gut health matters. So many times we're looking at this issue, this issue, this issue, and they all come back to gut health. So that's a very common thing. Something that you said that I did not know before was that you said that being in the sunlight helps to create that melatonin. I knew that the blue light made it so that the melatonin wasn't released. So we couldn't sleep. For example, they say, make sure to turn off your screens 30 minutes before you go to bed so that your body can start to settle down. But that one, I did not know that one. Yeah, you will be astounded by if you get up in the morning and you know as soon as you can going outside, that automatically starts your melatonin production. And again, it's through the pineal gland that this hormone can, can start to be accumulated during the day and then released at nighttime. Amazing. Okay. So what did they say? So now that you know that this is an issue, what is the solution? Have proper outside. Yeah. Really go outside. Absolutely. More often. Um, sometimes I will use the app and now this is actually to help track a uh, vitamin D level, but it's to not get burnt because obviously we know if we stay out in the sun too long, we can get burnt. And I don't, I'm not a person that wears sunscreen. So I am very strict about using this app. It's actually called D minder. If you've ever heard of it, it is phenomenal, oh phenomenal. It's free. You plug in your information and it is spot on by your geographic location. The time it might say from 8 30, this current time of the year being in August, it might say 8 30 to 4 30 
is the time when you have susceptibility to getting burnt. According to the data that you put into it, whether your skin type, age, if I'm in Pennsylvania, for example, how long you can stay out without getting burnt and getting a good amount of sun exposure. So mm-hmm. I, use, I use that a lot. It's not for melatonin per se, but I know it's, a, it's, it's an, an indirect benefit. It's really for you to just get good sun exposure to, if you want to track your vitamin D level, you certainly can. Fascinating. So the idea is we need to be outside and get all the positive benefits of being outside. We need that vitamin D production. We need the melatonin to be created and we don't want to get burned. We don't want to get too much. We need that protection from the sun. So finding that balance between the two, um, that recommendation of time, fascinating, just fascinating. Okay. So you're working on, okay, for now. So we are found, we're trying to solve that. We're, we're doing the Sherlock Holmes things and trying to figure out what the problem is. So far, we have some food sensitivities. We got some broccoli, we got lamb, we got green pepper. We also have low production of melatonin. So now I've got some solutions, some things that I can do to make some changes so that I feel better. Were there other, you said also that you did a stool sample and there was something that they discovered in that one. Yes. So to go into the the gut health category, if I remember correctly, there was E. coli, an abnormal amount that showed up. There was another bacteria called H. pylori. That's the abbreviation. It's it's Helicobacter pylori, which does impact your own stomach acid, your hydrochloric acid that helps you break down foods and in turn helps you absorb them to get the nutrients from the food. So if you have a H. pylori, most likely it is feeding on your hydrochloric acid, limiting your ability to digest your foods properly, which might induce bloating or stomach discomfort. And it can also impact your melatonin production. <laughs> of course, if you're uh-huh. gut, in- so it's, it's all this beautiful, complex <laughs> system of, of how one thing impacts the other thing. And with the emotional eating, if we're not of course, when we think of emotional eating, we might think of mental health or just emotional health. And if we're not eating the proper foods, if we're not digesting them, okay, how can we make these neurotransmitters to help us feel calm, to help us feel that confident self? And so again, it's just our gut health is like our brain health, you know, one impacts the other one. So those are just two bacteria that definitely came up to be like, wow, something's going on here. And what's also beautiful about the test is that it does have an immune section. So we are looking at our um, secretory IgA, it's called. It's a specific immunoglobulin. And that was very low, meaning I could have been chronically stressed for a long period of time and my immune system is low, which opens the door, metaphorically, (laughs) to allow these gut bugs to come in more easily because I can't fight it anymore because I've been fighting for so long. And now this is the best that my immune system can do. So that is really pivotal. And okay, does that open me up to get more parasites to have pneumonia? No, anything like that, that can open us up. It doesn't necessarily mean, well, I don't really get sick. You know, I don't have the sniffly nose or blah, 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 but how's your gut feeling? Are you digesting properly? Can you go to the bathroom at least once or twice per day? So all of those definitely play into the stool test. And I know I'm missing a lot of things. So that I love that test. It's it's super helpful to just see a lot of the imbalances that are going on. That is amazing. And as you're bringing up these things, we're talking about gut health and being able to get some information about what is going on inside of your body. And you also kind of touched lightly on some things that not everyone is aware of. And that is the correlation that the integration of our physical health with our mental health and our emotional health. You talked about emotional eating, which is a problem for many people. And it's interesting to realize that here there is a physiological reason behind it. And so it's not just emotional eating. It is, there's something going wrong in my gut that is kind of helping to produce this. And also you talked about the gut and the melatonin, and also you're probably very aware that our, our, those feel good chemicals, that dopamine, 90% of it is produced in the gut. 
which is more than a quarter. I mean, it's like almost all of it. So our gut health, if that is not running properly, we don't feel good. Not only physically, I don't feel good, but mentally and emotionally, I don't feel good. And so that is a huge issue that these things are connected one and the other. So we're also talking about stress and how stress affects not just our mental and emotional health, but our physical health. Again, they're all interrelated. And our body, the way that it works, that when we are in that stress, that fight or flight mode, it our body turns off some of our basic systems or turns them down. Like right now, if I got to run away from this tiger, nothing else matters. Because if I'm not safe from this tiger, then I mean, I'm dead. So let's take care of this, put everything else on hold. So when we're in that stress cycle, that stress, um, I don't know, function, then our body says, well, let's we don't need to worry about digestion. Let's turn that off, turn it down. Uh, we don't need to worry about growth processes. And we don't need to worry about reproduction. We don't need to worry about this, that, the other. Turn all those down or off. Get away from the tiger. And then when we're safe from the tiger, then everything else is supposed to turn back on, that rest and digest phase. And so if we're constantly in chronic stress, then our body is not functioning parts are shut off. Our digestion is shut off. So those things really matter. So was there anything that you did to help work on, on stress? Yes, a ton. So if we're looking at stress, stress could be the water that we're drinking that might have residuals of prescription drugs in it, right? Per se. It could be the air that we're breathing when we're driving to work and we're getting hit by the fumes. That's stress. <laughs> It can be these little things that we might not think is stress. It could be the boss giving us too much work on our plate. Those can all be stressors that shift our nervous system into that fight or flight. And if we're pumping out this adrenaline and norepinephrine all the time, our adrenal glands are, those are the responsible organs and there's one on each kidney. Those are pumping out all these hormones. And like you just said, it cannot do that all the time. And so that impacts our thyroid health. And we know that our thyroid, there's a receptor cell. All of our cells have receptors for the thyroid hormone. And it's very important to, for our metabolism, for our mental health. And so over time, as you said, that just keeps slowing down and slowing down. And I think what might be important to also mention, I was kind of thinking about the other markers on the, the stool test was there was a, a pancreatic marker. It was looking at how my pancreas was functioning. And we know that there are obviously key enzymes that the pancreas makes to help our insulin be more stable. And so if I have low pancreatic output, the insulin that my body is supposed to be producing is not stable, meaning I can have these dips in energy, these highs and lows, meaning my blood sugar is not good. <laughs> And we know that a lot of the U.S. especially is that we have problems with blood sugar. So I'm not necessarily just pointing at this pancreatic enzyme, but I'm just noting that because that is part of the story here of me having these really big dips in the afternoon, feeling like I need another 16 ounce, 16 ounce of coffee to just get me through the day. Oh, wow. So that was another key indicator of this roller coaster of emotions of just chronic stress. And later on, I would say probably a year and a half later, you know, as the onion keeps unfolding, I did a thyroid panel to look at how impaired my thyroid was because I did have instances where I felt like there was a little bit of a frog in my throat. And mind you, emotionally, I have had challenges with boundaries. I have had challenges with expressing myself. If we want to look at the spiritual component, our throat chakra is right here, just where our beautiful butterfly gland thyroid is very connected. <laughs> so women, if we have trouble expressing ourselves and expressing our truth, let's look at how our metabolism is functioning, how our mental health is functioning. Because from the results of my thyroid panel, it was kind of like there was a lot of gas going on, like a lot of the um, the energy being produced, but then there was a lot of the breaking going on. So it wasn't like um, 
the flow of my thyroid was not producing as it should, even though, according to the lab, my results were all in the green. There were no high red flags, according to the reference ranges of the Western lab. And that's super important to look at because so you had a thyroid function. test in yeah. in your first set of lab tests, and that said you're green, you're good to go. And when you did these these other tests later, testing that same thing with I, I, I guess it's some different methods or different standards, or they're looking for something different, found what you expressed as the gas pushing the gas pedal and the brake pedal at the same time. They're both working, but they're fighting each other. Right. So when we're looking, when we're comparing functional labs, like functional reference ranges, I'll say they're different than Western ranges, because if I'm going to a family physician and we're doing a a thyroid panel, the ranges you'll notice are very wide. It captures a lot of people. It's more of a maintenance rather than the functional side being more of an optimizing health. Like we want to optimize, we want to get better. So those ranges are much narrow, narrower, and really it, it, it doesn't capture as many people. It's, it's two totally different outlooks of maintenance. We're just getting by when optimizing, let's, let's be vital. Yes, super That's important. Huge. Yeah, That's huge. so my thyroid panel looked great to this side, the Western side, it did not look great to the functional side. And mind you, our thyroid stimulating hormone, which a lot of you know as TSH, it should be 1.5 at its highest. If it's over that, there could be a red flag. Now there are a lot of different markers like free T3, free T4. There's, um, reverse T3, all of those markers are important, but the one that you probably have heard of is the TSH because that is typically on a standard blood panel like a CBC. So this very important part that I'm going to say is that our liver is responsible for a lot of the conversion of the thyroid to make it active. So if your TSH is over that 1.5, The concern is, or one of the concerns is, how is your liver functioning that it's that marker? Is your liver functioning okay? Clearly it's not if that that number is over 1.5. So as we know, like the liver is our detox organ. It's supposed to clear out a lot of things. It does a lot of different functions, but its main purpose is to help us detoxify. So again, if our liver is not performing and detoxify, again, that exhaust that we're breathing in, detoxify the prescription drugs that we're drinking that we unknowingly do, it has to detoxify all of that. It is working 24-7, 365 all the time. And so if we're not actually supporting the liver, the best that it can do starts to degrade, starts to go down. And again, I think it's either 40% or 50% of our liver does this conversion in it to help our thyroid function. Well, they're very, very related. So if my liver is not functioning at 100%, what do I do to support my liver? I mean, because I think that is a benefit for everyone. Absolutely. So let's look at the lifestyle factors. What water are we drinking? What foods are we eating? processed foods? Are we consuming a lot of, um, a lot of PUFAs, a lot of polyunsaturated fatty acids, you know, like the canola oils or the different seed oils, like what oils are we consuming? Our emotional health plays into this. You know, I'm sure you may have heard like our organs might be associated with specific emotions. You know, the liver might be connected to anger. Are you holding on to anger? Are you holding on? So it, it is this deep, there can be a lot of things. <laughs> I think the best thing that you can do for the liver is to support it with the right foods to also, you can do castor oil packing. I know a lot of us have heard of castor oil packs probably by now. It's a great way to help detoxify your liver. 
It's very simple to do. It has a profound impact. I do that probably about two or three times a week, and I have noticed um, great benefit from it, just from my ability to have good bowel movements. I'm not depending on the castor oil pack to have good bowel movements, but it certainly does help. It also helps with if you are experiencing any sort of menstrual issues, you know, having a PMS, heavy cramps. So there's a lot of benefits that you can use castor oil packs for. One of them is to help the liver. Fascinating. So we're talking about the liver. One of the basic things is the liver's job is to help with toxins. So an obvious thing we can do to help support our liver is don't purposefully put more toxins in. I mean, there are things like we breathe and, you know, the air, maybe we don't have all the control over the air quality, but the water that we drink, we can have a lot of control over that. And also the foods that we choose to eat and then additional helps. So that was lovely. That's wonderful. So going back to your story. Okay. Here we are. We have all this information. Doo, 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 doo. And now you have this new information and made some lifestyle changes to make it. Did it make a difference? Did it solve your problems? Did it make you, do you feel optimal now rather than just hit a maintenance level of health? I don't even think you were at a maintenance level of health. You were just confused for a while. Yes, very confused. I would say when I originally started the protocol with a practitioner four years ago now, I saw huge benefits when I took out the yellow and the red foods. I was actually on, because my hormones, you know, I know we mentioned melatonin, but my other hormones were very low. My progesterone, which is more of an anabolic, this steroidal type of hormone, this build you up hormone, that was very low, like a two on a scale of, I think it goes all the way up to like 180. It was very low. So according to the clinical advisor at the time, I actually did a round of bioidentical hormone drops because I needed some relief. And a lot of times if we're experiencing quite intense symptoms, we want to help you as much to get you the relief and then to help rebalance and repopulate. And then there's more of a maintenance. So I just say that because yes, I did experience a lot of great shifts over those six months as I was going through the healing protocol, not just with the natural supplements, but my change in diet, like I mentioned with the foods. Also, what was super important is that I implemented meditation. And I was one of those people that I was resistant to meditation because I was very go, go, go. And that's how I got into this predicament in the first place was the not slowing down, achieving person. <laughs> and I'm, I'm still a driven person, but there's more of a balance and I have more of awareness of my emotional self. Because at the time when I was going through these tests and, and shifting lifestyle factors, I was very much in my masculine energy, very much structured, love the test. And I still do, but experiencing more of the emotional side and working with my emotions, I've been able to cultivate more of this feminine strength as well. And this is again, ever unfolding, lot to learn, lot to experience, lot to heal. And I will say, I, I feel like sometimes people are two different sides of the spectrum, whether they, they work on their diet, they work on the lifestyle factors, more of like those physical factors and then they might get into more of this mental health, mental, emotional health. Well, maybe the other side, they're going to a therapist or they're doing EMDR sessions or somatic work, whatever. And then they hop over into, oh, I think I should change my diet now. So it seems like it's kind of one side or the other. And I was more of the shifting these strategic lifestyle factors. But the reason I'm mentioning this is because I still felt like something was missing. Mm -hmm. And that is when I delved into the emotional side. And that was a big side <laughs> that I didn't know a lot about. I didn't really want to touch it. It was very painful to look at. I didn't have the tools at all to be able to cope with myself. Because if I would have a concern or emotions that come up, I would call somebody and vent to them and throw all my stuff at them because I didn't know how to handle anything. I couldn't really sit with myself. and. Through time, of course, I, I sought help. And through working with different coaches, therapists, practitioners, I've been able to add those tools to my toolbox, just like I did with the shifting in my lifestyle. So 
I have now added that into my coaching program as well, because it is that important things like sound healing, things like somatic experiencing and meditation all are combined to create more harmony in the body. And isn't that wonderful? Once again, we're coming a full circle. We've mentioned this a couple of times that our physical, our mental, our emotional health and well-being are all intertwined. And when you help one, you help them all. And I loved how you mentioned, I can start from this side and that's okay. It doesn't mean uh, I can add the other later. Or if I start from this side, that's okay. I can add the other later. We got to start somewhere. But when it's all said and done, if we really want to be optimally healthy and just have fantastic well-being, it includes all of those aspects, including being able to sit with ourselves and to be able to, I would say, I would like to get even beyond coping with our problems to being able to heal from our problems, past traumas, our, our misunderstandings, those, those beliefs that we have about ourselves and our, our life, that there's ways to, um, there's ways to heal. And when you heal one, it heals the other because the body keeps the score. The emotional things become trapped. And it's real. Oh, found this. You were amazing. And I want to listen forever and ever. And now I want to know how much these tests cost. I'm thinking, oh, do I want to do this? And I'm thinking of half a dozen people that I think could sign up because how many people just have questions and they're not getting the answers? Yeah, I, I totally agree. I think the tests really fast track our progress instead of just guessing and, and, and checking things for sure. And I want to say the only test that I know of offhand that a person could use their um, health saving savings account, which is like FSA or, or yeah, so I was doing that. is the, um, the food sensitivity test. Oh, really? Um, other See. than that, these are an out of pocket expense, which sometimes deters people. Cause it's like, Oh, well, my insurance doesn't cover it. Then sorry, very high passion for the, ins- I used to work in the insurance industry. It was oh, okay. like air model. It's not a health I mean, I don't believe, like, if you need to get your arm fixed because you broke it, absolutely. But if you're trying to, again, optimize your health, I guarantee you a lot of these doctors in traditional medicine don't even know about these deaths because they're not involved in insurance. Okay. So most of it's out of pocket. Are we talking hundreds, thousands? How much? Um, So for the five foundational labs that I spoke about, and I actually only touched on three of them. The other two, there's a metabolic wellness profile and there's a mucosal barrier assessment. So in total, those are about 1500. Okay. And they're not all up front. It's not like I need 1500 to order them. Um, It is split out depending on the lab, like maybe one lab it's called fluids IQ and I have to pay up front to get them drop shipped while another lab might you put your card information on the requisition form. And once they get your specimen, they take it out. So there, it's not like that's all up front at first, but certainly within the first month, that is $1,500. Okay. So are they like 300 each? So if I only needed three, it would be 900 or some a lot and some a little or? Some a lot, some a little. Like the, the stool test, that's in the 400s. Oh. While the metabolic wellness, I would say that's 170. So it does vary depending on the complexity of the test. That is so cool. I love having resources available. And and these are things that I've never heard before. So to increase the the resources, it's like having more tools in your tool belt. And you can say, oh, well, I like that. Oh, let me try this one and see what works for you and what gives you the answers. I love things that work. I love things that I like. I wanted to work. Yes. Oh my gosh. I have to, I actually should have mentioned this. There's a test called hair tissue mineral analysis, HTMA, and you're literally sending some of your hair away. And it tests for a lot of mineral content, heavy metals that might be in your system. And what was so interesting about the test that I did, I had high uranium. And the practitioner that reviewed my consult was like, maybe you should check your home for radon. I radon. Matter of fact, we have high radon. And thank goodness I had this hair test to then test the home for high radon because obviously it's tasteless, it's smellless. I would have never known. There is a pipe in the basement that has that is a radon pipe. However, there was not a fan on it to help it disperse into the air uh, out of the roof. 
So how interesting is it that that task may have saved some of my family's lives? Yeah. In your hair. Yeah. So were you able to put in a fan so that that's not a a problem now? Okay, good. Good, good, good. good. Wow. Oh, I, I have loved this. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. How exciting. I appreciate your energy as well. So you're, you're in process. You, you get people to test and then do you uh, consult with them and say, oh, this means to do this and this means to do this and da, da, da. Yeah. I do have two different programs. One is really centered. It's much smaller. It's just centered on food. There is a lot of education around different lifestyle shifts that you can do, but I find that Food is one of the largest drivers to people's health. So I created a program just focusing on food. It's a three-month program that includes the food sensitivity test. While the other one is those five labs. So we're working together for about six months and not just looking at those labs, but there is what's called a dress protocol. It's like five pillars that I teach on dress being diet, rest, exercise, stress reduction, and supplementation. So over the course of these six months, we're really shifting the lifestyle factors in addition to going over the protocol, like from the test results. So if, you know, with the, when I mentioned for the stool test, me having that H. pylori bacteria, there is a protocol to follow to help eradicate that bacteria and bring you back into balance. So we're going to add that into the protocol, but also the lifestyle is like, is where it's at. General principles of health building far outperform a targeted specific treatment. So if we can really nail down these lifestyle factors, we can turn on and turn off our genetic expression, which is so important. Epigenetics, which we didn't really get to. I mean, gosh, darn. We haven't even scratched the surface. I know, I know. We have part two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's been super fun though. Oh, yeah delightful. Oh, I feel blessed to have met you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. (laughs) Is there anything that you want to make sure that we cover before we close today, including how to reach you and get some of these tests if they want them? Yes, absolutely. Um, Firstly, thank you for having me. I know that we covered a lot of information. Hopefully we didn't lose anybody, but I think if we did, the one thing I would love to just suggest to start with is to deeply breathe. And that seems so simple to get caught up in all of these tests, all of these changes, it can feel very overwhelming, but I just want to suggest to start with five, 10, 15 minutes a day, five minute periods, five minutes in the morning, five minutes in the afternoon, five minutes in the evening to deeply belly breathe, to calm your system down. Because really all of these things spark because our nervous system is dysregulated. So if we can just start with helping our nervous system come back into a state of calm and come back into the present moment, the more that we can build our awareness and build our capacity to then say, okay, maybe I should try these, this test, or maybe I should remove this gluten. So just start with deeply breathing (laughs) and to get in touch with me, I would absolutely love to have a conversation. You can email me at discover at fallonmorningstar.com or another great way is to reach me on Instagram is at fallonmorningstar. Thank you. This has been just enlightening and I've loved it. Thank you so much. In closing, I'd like to share a quote by Haruki Murakami. He said, what happens when people open their hearts? They get better. Today, I invite our listeners to open their hearts and their minds so they can get better. See you next time on Linda's Corner. Thanks for listening. Please share and subscribe to help us reach new listeners. And if you'd like to heal your life from the inside out, there is a free video series at hopeforhealingfoundation.org. Just click on the free stuff tab. I also invite you to grab a copy of one of my books, like Crushed, A Journey Through Depression, and You Got This, an action plan to calm fear, anxiety, worry, and stress. See you next time on Linda's Corner. 